What's going on, everyone? So yesterday, we saw LeBron James turn back the clock, put on the heroic cape, and just completely take over for the Lakers against the Los Angeles Clippers. LeBron James, by himself, outscored the Clippers 21-16 to in the fourth quarter. The Lakers ended up outscoring the Clippers 39-16 to in total, ended up coming back winning 116-112, to and it was spectacular. The Lakers looked like a fish out of water for pretty much the entire game. They were down 18. They go down 21 in the fourth. It just, it looked like, that's it. They're, they're taking the L. You got a game tomorrow against the Washington Wizards. Pack it in, pack it up. Rest LeBron, rest AD, and let's just move on and, and try to get this win against the Wizards and right the ship. And instead, LeBron said, nah, time out. Sit down. Father time, take a seat. Let, let We need this win. I'm not letting us lose this game. And LeBron James did absolute everything in his power to will that team to the win. And it wasn't even just the scoring. Scoring was spectacular. But it was him taking on the challenge on the defensive side of things. Him locking down Kawhi Leonard. You're talking about one of the premier guys in this league who is having an impeccable offensive season. He's like half a percent away from 50-40-90 and was just torching us all game long. LeBron James said, oh, we're going to stop that too. And really willed this team. And look, everybody in that fourth quarter deserves credit. Because you don't win that game without all five guys, right? LeBron James undoubtedly deserves the most praise and credit. But Rui hit some huge shots. The big three had that five-point scoring burst. Uh, D'Angelo Russell hit two huge threes, including the one that pretty much sealed the game. Anthony Davis' defense and rebounding, keeping balls alive, the offensive rebounds. Austin Reeves even held his own on the defensive side of things. It was huge. They made that push, but it was all led by LeBron James. I'm hoping that this is the turning point for the Lakers. I'm hoping that this was the... Sometimes you need that moment, right? Sometimes you need that her heroism that is like, look, I still got it. Just get me there. I need your, I can't do this game in and game out for 82 games anymore. But I can do this for four games in a playoff series if I'm healthy. I can do this on the occasional night where I need to turn it, turn it on, right? But I need the rest of you. We have the talent. You have me, right? Get me to the promised land and I will deliver. I still, although I'm in year 21, although I'm age 39, I still can go and completely dominate and take over a game if I need to. 21 points, that's not enough. You should have been up 30. Because now, guess what? I'm going to lock down your best player, and I'm going to take over and dominate this game. I'm going to send a message to my team. I'm hoping that this was the message game. Great example is the Clippers. We'll, stick, we'll use the Clippers, right? Because that's who the Lakers play. Clippers trade for James Harden and were just completely dead in the water, right? They, they're, they're on a six-game losing streak. They look like they're about to lose seven straight, and it looked like it was a total disaster. And then they get into that fourth quarter. They get late in that fourth quarter, and James Harden really starts turning it on. He goes on a nice little scoring stretch by himself. But then he hit that and one three. That ended up winning the game and sealing the game for the Clippers. And after that moment, everything changed. The Clippers just seemed like an entirely new team and went on like a crazy win streak and are now like whatever they are. They're like 32 out of the last 40 games or whatever. 32 out of the last 45 games, something like that. Right? They've just been one of the best teams in the league since that moment. And it all started with that momentum shifting heroic moment of like, okay, like, look, let's figure this out. And my hope is that this is the moment for the Lakers. This is the game where the team goes, okay, we still got it. Because look, the Lakers are still in it. The Lakers are the ninth seed still, which is unfortunate, but we are like two games away from, which we play Sacramento twice in the month of March. If we beat Sacramento both times, I believe bare minimum we're the A seed. Bare minimum. Because I think 
what I mean, obviously the Warriors, we got to keep pace with them, but I think we're in good shape if we beat the Kings twice. But we're right in the thick of it. We're only three games out. Obviously, I would have loved to beat the Phoenix Suns. That would have went a long way. But can't make up the losses. You can only make up the wins. If the Lakers handle business and play the right way, they can win enough games to get into that six seed. Bare minimum, they need that seventh or eighth. They finish ninth or tenth. It's not impossible for them to make the playoffs. It's just so difficult. Right, like let's say the let's say the playoffs started today. You have the play in turn or the in season tournament or whatever or play in tournament. Yeah, Lakers and Warriors. Lakers might beat the Warriors nine out of ten times, right? But can Steph and Clay and Wiggins and all those guys can they shoot the lights out one game and beat you? Sure. Right, the Lakers could completely figure it out, win their last five games down the stretch, look like the best team in the league, but still finish ninth. And then not even make the playoffs. Just because, again, one game, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Right? So, but let's say you beat the Warriors. Well, now you got to go play the Mavs or you got to play the Kings. Who, again, you may be able to beat in a seven-game series. I would take the Lakers over both of those teams. But guess what? That doesn't mean that either of those teams can't win one game against the Lakers. And so now you lose that game and now that's it. It's over. It's just so hard where if you at least get into the seventh or eighth seed, I have a lot of faith in the Lakers to make the postseason. They'll win at least one of those games. And then now you play most likely Minnesota or OKC. I think the Lakers can beat either of those teams in a seven game series, right? To me, it's more so if the Lakers get into the postseason, I believe in the Lakers. I just don't have full faith in them getting to the postseason is the, is the issue, Right. Because it's mostly just been their inconsistencies. It's it's the the game ins and games outs that the the game where LeBron James has to turn on the 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 heroics in order for you to win. Like those are the kind of things that that drive me crazy. It's like if you just play the right way and you you do what you need to do. I mean the Lakers were just so many ill-advised shots, just shot chucking, turning the ball over, just being careless, not playing deep. It's just the things that you need to have success. It's like, where where are those things? What is going on here? What are we doing here? Those are the kind of things that are extremely frustrating. And it's like, if you we've seen you play the right way, you win. And they have the talent. They have the offensive firepower. I mean, that was the big thing. I mean, even even in the game, they were talking about like, hey, the Lakers have the firepower to get back into this. Guess what they did? Right, a lot of it again was LeBron, but it wasn't just LeBron. It's it's one of those things where it's just like, can they put it together enough to close out the rest of the way strong enough to be in the conversation for at least the six seed and kind of let the the chips fall where they may. Right, the Lakers. Luckily, they have tiebreakers over teams like the the Phoenix Suns and the New Orleans Pelicans. And one of these teams are very likely going to to just crumble. Yeah, every year, there's that one team that just crumbles at the end. Will they crumble enough for the Lakers to to overtake? That's up to the Lakers, in my opinion. But you're seeing like Sacramento's been crumbling for a while now. The Pelicans are kind of hit or miss, right? Can, can, will the Pelicans start to crumble? They're notorious for like being in it, and then at the end of the season, they just fall apart. Some of it is injury. Some of it is just their their play. And again, you're seeing the Pelicans. They've, they're they losing games and stuff. So like to me, again, you, you got to beat Sacramento. Obviously, the Lakers need to win as many games as possible. I think bare minimum the Lakers need to win at least 13 more games. So they have to go basically 13 and 9 the rest of the way. Um which is very doable. That's only 4 games over 500. <laughs> That's not a lot. Right? So I think if the Lakers can do that, I think they'll that'll be 45 wins. I think they'll be in the conversation of the 6 seed with tiebreakers and stuff. I think that'll go a long way. They may be able to get it. Got to worry about Dallas. That's going to be tough. Again, you beat Sacramento twice. Well, then now you don't have to worry about Sacramento. But Dallas and the Warriors are the two teams that I worry about just because they're the two, like, Warriors have a super easy schedule the rest of the way, and they're right on our tail. And then the Dallas Mavericks have been playing really good basketball lately. 
So it's like those are the two teams that I have the most concerns with. But to me, it's like the Lakers, it's up to the Lakers to do their job. Lakers do their job. They handle business. You go beat the Wizards tomorrow. Now you're five games over 500. You're you're tied with Sacramento in the win column. You're only a game behind the Mavericks in the win column and two games behind the the Pelicans in the win column, right? And you're only one game from the Suns in the win column. So at that point, it's just you've played more games. You're hoping some of those teams take some losses. You finish with the same record as the Pelicans and the Suns. Now you overtake both of them, and you're in good shape, right? Now you're the sixth seed or maybe the fifth seed or whatever. The Lakers can at least get into that seventh or eighth spot. I think they'd be in good shape too and go a long way. But it's up to the Lakers, right? They don't have an easy schedule. And you got to be another big win is the the Warriors. That's what I was going to mention. Is the 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 Lakers still play the Warriors one more time um, at the end of the season, right? Or well, uh, two more times. So they play the Warriors on the 16th, and then they play them uh, to to round out the the year on April 9th. Beat the Warriors those two times. That gives you two full games on them, and then beat the Kings the two times you play the Kings. That gives you two full games on the Kings, and I don't think you'll have to worry. Those four games, more than any of the other games, in my opinion, are the most important. Because those are the two teams, one, you're trying to chase, and another one, you're trying to stay ahead. I think going into that March 13th game against the Kings, and then that March 16th game, I think by the, by the end of that Kings game, maybe by the end of that Warriors game on the 16th, I think we'll know where the Lakers are going to be. Right, because let's say they beat the Wizards five games over five hundred. You got the Nuggets, the Thunder, the Kings, the Bucks, the Timberwolves, the Kings, and the Warriors. Those are your seven games. If they go two and five down that stretch, then season's over. Wrap it up. Call it a year. Maybe the Lakers get lucky and make the playoffs, but it's just such a grueling road. At that point, I don't know if they win the playoff or win the or have a chance legitimately at a championship. But what if they go? You know, four and three down that stretch. So now there's six games over 500. And let's say they did beat Sacramento twice and they beat the Warriors. And then let's say that they beat, you know, whatever, the the Thunder, who they've had their number this season, right? And those are your four wins and you're in good shape. And it's like, okay, well, now we're six games over 500. We got like, you know, a, a three game cushion over the Warriors. And we, we got a game, two games over the Kings. And now we're just trying to keep pace. With the Hawks, the Sixers, the Pacers, the Bucks, the Grizzlies, the Pacers, and the Nets, right? Like that, those are all very winnable games after that Warriors game, right? I mean, the Hawks, you should beat. The Sixers, uh, we'll see if Joel Embiid comes back at that point because he's supposed to maybe come back at the end of March. Um, but if he's not there, Lakers should win that game. Pacers are beatable. Bucks would be tough. Grizzlies, uh, Pacers, and Nets, right? You should beat the Pacers at least once. Uh, and then the month of April, all of those games, in my opinion, are winnable. The Raptors, you should be, they might end up packing it up and calling it a, 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 a season. Uh, the Wizards, you should be. The Cavs, that would be tough. The Timberwolves, they might have the one seed locked up and, and in shape by that point because they'd only have three games left. So they might already be in position where it's like, okay, well, let's just rest guys and get ready for the postseason. The Warriors, that's a game you're really going to have to worry about. Grizzlies will probably have packed it in at that point. And then the Pelicans. So out of those seven games, you really only have potentially the Cavs and the Warriors. right? Or I guess Cavs, Warriors, and Pelicans are the three three teams. But if the Cavs have basically the three seed locked up or the two seed locked up, they might rest guys. So it may just be the Pelicans and the Warriors. We'll see. Time will tell. But regardless, Lakers got to handle business. Do your job. In my opinion, the Lakers control their own destiny. Right? You, you, you win, you win your games, you handle business, you're in good shape. But anyway, again, as always, this is a discussion. Pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Group my points, disagree with my points. Uh, what did you think of LeBron's heroics? Do you think that this is kind of the turning point for the Lakers? Again, I'm hoping. I don't know this for certain. But I'm I'm hoping that this is kind of like the okay here here's the moment 
right? Here, here is the moment. But anyway, love to hear it. Let me know. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let's enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. And that subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.